Well, I'm joined now by Christopher Pissaridis, a Greek Cypriot economist who won a Nobel Prize in 2010 and who has just been named as head of the Cypriot President's Economic Policy Council. Well, it's clear that the Germans are getting increasingly angry and frustrated with the Cyprus government. What are you advising the president to do? Well, well, before I say that, I should also say that the Cypriots are getting increasingly angry with the Germans because what's happening here is unheard of. The problem is not that serious. It's been made more serious by the Eurogroup meeting and by the Troika. There are two banks in deep trouble. There's been a government in power for three weeks. Give them some chance to see what needs to be done, to see what solution we'll come up with. But in fact, it, there isn't much you can advise the president to do other than what's been dictated because we've been given an ultimatum that unless we reach a, a solution, some kind of solution by Monday, there will be no more uh, uh, money given to the banks to carry on and therefore the whole system, the whole banking system and with it the economy will collapse and therefore a decision has to be reached uh, tonight uh, or tomorrow. And what my advice is, is the one that uh, any reasonable person who doesn't want to see complete disaster will say is that uh, accept a haircut, accept the resolution of uh, one of the two banks that is uh, uh, essentially uh, bankrupt and uh, let's hope for the best ones uh, that's over and we get the loan. But what, what do you mean by, you know, wasn't that bad? I mean, you know, why would, why is it in Germany's interest to provoke a crisis that could lead to, you know, the end of the Eurozone as an idea, really. I mean, you're, you're suggesting well, they didn't well, need I, to I do this. Know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that because the cause of the problem... I, no, no, before I say that, the, the Cyprus economy is basically sound. The fiscal finances are sound. The economy was growing well. The two banks, the two biggest Cypriot banks, invested very heavily in Greek bonds. And when the Greek uh, bond haircut came, they lost enormous money that they haven't been able to make up. They went to their government uh, to get help. The government couldn't help them and went to the Troika. That's the background story. Now, one obvious solution is that since the problem was to a very large extent caused by the Greek haircut, and there is a European financial stability facility to help banks out of trouble, uh, lend them for that, capitalize them from that, and then see what needs to be done after that. Okay. Not threaten with bankruptcy the entire economy. Yeah. Or, well, I mean, you've been very clear that you, you think they should accept this raid on banking deposits. I mean, do you believe that the Parliament will agree to it? I mean, given the, the protests outside, the queues in the banks, will the people accept it? Well, as, uh, as Faisal said in his report, in the, the first time they were confront, confronted, they said, this is so unfair, we're not going to accept it. But since then, uh, liquidity is running out. You know, when they see the economy in this state, they have to think of the, the whole economy and then do it in a way that minimizes the... Um, pain on those directly affected who are demonstrating uh, behind me, as you can hear them. And it looks like they'll be able to reach a, a compromise tonight or, or at best uh, tomorrow morning. But it's not going to be a good one, but it's one that has to be done. I mean, isn't this, isn't this ultimately Cyprus paying the price for letting itself become a playground for rich Russians? You know, and some of it dodgy money. I fear, I fear that the motives behind it might be more political than uh, economic and caring about the future of the Eurozone. I cannot see the reputation of the Eurozone uh, being uh, positively enhanced, if you like, from this uh, experience. I cannot see people looking outside and saying, yes, this is a partnership of equals who understand each other and trying to help each other's economy. It looks more like blackmail from the big and powerful against the weak and the, the weak trying to do everything they can uh, to keep going within the Eurozone. We, we need to think about this place in the way the visionaries set it up as, uh, as, as the future of Europe, not as something where Europe sit behind fight it yes. Christopher Pissaridis, thank you very much indeed for joining us and I'm sorry about that little satellite break up at the end. Kathy. Thanks, Chris.